So first, I just want to acknowledge my primary collaborators here. So Kai Zhang, uh, he's from the School of Information at the University of Michigan. He's really my uh, main informatics person that I work with a lot. And then there's also Kate Fitzgerald, uh, who is a uh, pediatric psychiatrist, for which uh, we based our study on uh, some of her needs for her, her own study. Also, there's no conflicts of interest to uh, report for us. Now, recruitment is actually very difficult for those of you who have ever, ever tried that. So at the University of Michigan, apparently about 47% of our studies don't recruit a single participant into a trial. And I won't get into all the details why, but it's a, it's a big issue, and I'm sure it's an issue elsewhere as well. It's also very expensive to do, to do this. Our recruiters are expensive, especially if you have multiple locations. So oftentimes people have somebody sitting in a clinic looking for patients that might be eligible. It's also very time consuming. And they have a hard time identifying the right patients many times because a lot of patients are coming through and these recruiters often can't even figure out who the right patients might be to actually uh, approach. So what does recruitment often look like? This is what it looks like for us many times. So near our cafeteria, um, you can basically uh, rent a car or you can sign up for a, a study if you want. And you know, there's so much competition for these that pieces of paper are all covering each other up. And this is, this is really the standard of, of how things are, are done in many ways uh, these days. And even in the clinics, so in, in some of our clinics, of course on the, uh, the doors of the clinics we have the little uh, flyers that someone can pull off a tab and, and maybe sign up for a study. So the background of this is that there was a, a study that was uh, ongoing for recruitment to try to re, uh, find patients who were ages 8 to 20 years old with both general anxiety and healthy controls for a functional MRI study, basically to look at the, uh, the uh, levels of activity in the brain for uh, various purposes um, in children with anxiety. So what happened was we thought that maybe we could find these patients for the study using um, some, some things that were actually relatively inexpensive, iPads. They're a lot cheaper than... Um, having a, a recruiter everywhere, so we thought well, we can maybe put something on an iPad. They're very easy to use and the uh, families and patients are very familiar with them and they have a long battery life. So from a uh, logistical point of view, this is a great thing because the battery lasts the entire clinic day. You don't have to recharge it only at the end of the day. So what we did was we developed a questionnaire for the clerks to give to the patients, so this was not the clinicians at all. We cut the clinicians out completely. Uh, that was the best way to make this effective. Uh, so we try to integrate it into the workflow of uh, the actual corks. Uh, so basically, a patient comes, the cork would ask them questions. They often give them paperwork anyway. And we said, well, how about you also just give them this little questionnaire as well um, uh, to uh, see if patients might be uh, eligible. So it asked a few screening, screening questions. It was very simple. Uh, would they be willing to be contacted for more information? So they were not actually uh, agreeing to be in a study. They just said, yeah, here's a little bit about me. Ensure, contact me again. And the patients could op opt out at that point if they wanted to. So we designed this for both paper and iPad because we wanted to compare the, the two. So what we did was a four-month, four-phase study. So the first phase was paper only just to get a baseline. How were people using paper because that's the traditional way of doing things. Phase two was iPad only. So the quirks at that point were only handing out iPads. The third phase, the quirks were given a choice. You can decide whatever you like more, hand out a piece of paper or an iPad. And in the last phase, we asked the clerks to give the patient or family a choice to ask them what they would rather uh, prefer getting. We did this at two separate uh, general pediatrics clinics uh, uh, that are affiliated with the University of Michigan. So these clinics, one was in Ann Arbor and one was in Detroit. So for those of you who don't know what Michigan looks like, a lot of people say it looks like hand. I forget which hand, maybe this hand. Um, and uh, just to zoom in a little bit more, uh, the two clinics were in Ann Arbor and Livonia. Uh, Livonia is about halfway in between Ann Arbor and Detroit. Uh, so it's a little bit more uh, urban than Ann Arbor, but, um, uh, and th there are some differences. Uh, why did we pick these clinics? Well, just because these general pediatrics clinics are really where all of our children are at. So we have 40 general pediatricians in our health system spread over nine different clinical locations. We see over 100,000 patients a year. So there's a pretty good volume of uh, people coming through. So we just picked two of those clinics to, to try this out. So there were some differences in the paper and the iPad. The paper questionnaire, the clerks had to actually write down the name of the patient and their medical record number so we knew who they were. That actually ended up being a problem. For the iPad, uh, because we had to keep things secure, the clerk had to log in each time very briefly uh, every time they got uh, the iPad back to then give it to the patient. But it was tied to our scheduling system so that they could pull up the schedule for the day and click on the patient, um, just their name, and it would automatically know who the patient was and record all of that. And that way we could also exclude patients who were not the right age, for example, uh, or those who had done the questionnaire before and come back to the clinic. So just a few screenshot of, sc screenshots of what the system looked like. They would first log in. Uh, so they would just type in a username and password as one of the options. 
and then they would get the schedule. So the schedule is just a very simple thing, and they might, uh, I don't know if I have a pointer here, but they could uh, pick, let's say, Ernest Hemingway as, as the patient. The ones in red were either too young or had prior previously done the survey. And then this is what the, the uh, patient or families would look like, a little brief paragraph about what the study was about. They could right away say they're not interested, or they could answer seven questions that would help the recruiters get a better sense of whether they might be eligible or ineligible for the study. Then they could press submit answers. It's just very quick and simple. So they could might, maybe could say yes for a few answers. And then after the survey, and we had this on paper and on the iPad, we basically asked them what they thought of the survey. Just a very quick, simple, do you like it, did you not like it, what were your thoughts? In the final phase, the phase four, where we actually gave the patients a choice of iPad or paper, we actually asked them a separate question, which was not for the other phases, which is, why did you actually pick the iPad, or why did you pick the paper, depending on which, uh, which uh, approach they decided to use. After they did that, they got a little thank you message that said, please give it back to the clerks. The clerks would get it back. They would then log in uh, very quickly again with their password, and then, again, uh, they would see the patient list. In this case, Ernest Hemingway is now... Uh, marked off because uh, that patient has already uh, done the survey, so they won't get it again. There was one other thing that we did just for fun to try out. We also gave a different kind of login where they could, could pick uh, some pictures uh, rather than remembering a username and password. So they could pick, let's say, a combination of pictures to log in as well just to see if they, they liked that as well. Uh, so some of our results, so we had two different clinics. There were some differences in the races at each clinic, and that's just because of the, the populations they were drawn from. Uh, the clinic in Livonia really was much more white than uh, the one in Ann Arbor, which is a little bit more diverse. So there were a few significant differences uh, there. In terms of income, this is really an estimate. We just had median income for each zip code that the patients were from. But based on that, there was really no significant difference of the income. You know, some people might think that uh, more uh, well-off families might be familiar with these devices more, and, and therefore there might be uh, some difference there. Uh, in terms of the uh, eligible patients, so there were about 2,000 patients who came through during those uh, two clinics and, and four months uh, who were potentially eligible based on their age. Their aver the average age of those patients was about 12.3 years, and it was about half male and half female. Uh, among those, we got about half, a little more than half uh, of those patients actually returned a questionnaire. Uh, about uh, three-quarters of that was on the iPad and about one-quarter, uh, a little bit more, or one-third or so, on paper. Of course, the ones on the paper, about 40% of them um, had no medical record number or identifier on them at all, so we didn't even know who they were. And on the iPad, because it was actually uh, tied to the, the, the um, scheduling system, we could know exactly who they were, so that was really helpful. Uh, in terms of those who filled out the uh, um, survey and where we had a, a, a good enough identifiers, about the average age was, was a little under 13 years. It was, again, about half male and half female. About three-quarters of them said it would be okay for someone to contact, contact them again, which is, you know, really great. Um, and there wasn't much of a difference in the age of the people who said okay or not okay to contact. So even, even the younger patients um, or the families were, were okay with that. Uh, comparing the, uh, some of these again, so iPad in the left column, paper in the right column. We got a lot more surveys back on iPad than paper. Um, the average uh, estimated income of both groups the, who did iPad and paper, not really much of a difference. There was a, a little bit of a difference in the races between the two groups. That may also just be reflected by the difference in races of the clinic. So that, that's one thing we, we may have to look at a little bit more. Um, and uh, there were a few patients who were not the right age who actually filled out the paper just because the corks, um, you know, didn't actually uh, always get the right age for the, for the patients. Uh, interestingly, uh, almost twice as many people on the paper form uh, gave us an email to contact them as, as opposed to the iPad. My guess is just because it's a lot quicker and easier to write something out on a piece of paper than to type each letter on an, on an iPad. And uh, more people on the iPad, though, said it was okay to contact them on, than on paper. I don't know exactly why that would be the case, but that, that's what we did see. Uh, when we asked people, again, what their overall experience was with paper versus iPad, uh, the iPad did score higher. This was statistically significant, uh, although uh, meaningfully it may be a very small difference um, overall because it was 3.8 on paper versus 4.2 on iPad. Um, and then when we asked people, again, why did you pick paper versus iPad, uh, there were various reasons uh, for, for the iPad. A lot of People thought it would be more fun and more convenient. But interestingly, in one of the clinics, the one in Ann Arbor, um, we, whoops, let me just see if I can go back here. We had some, uh, a large number of corks suggested with some comments written in, such as, what iPad? Basically, the corks did not give them a choice. And that's, we, we kind of thought that might happen, which is why we added that cork suggested option. 
Uh, and then one other thing I'll just get to really quickly is that when we asked, when we looked at how many of uh, the eligible patients actually completed the questionnaires each month, what we really did find over time, especially um, in the Ann Arbor Clinic, was that uh, for the, for the iPad and really for, for everything that they were handing out, uh, it really went down. So by the end of phase four, the um, clinic in Ann Arbor, about 8% of the patients were getting it, whereas the one in Livonia, the clerks were a little bit more motiv motivated, and they actually kept going. So about half of the patients were still getting uh, those uh, questionnaires. Uh, we did actually look maybe that the clerks in Ann Arbor were, were working much more than the ones in Livonia, and it turned out not to be the case. So we actually looked at, looked at the workload, the group that was handing out more uh, iPads and fill, handing out more questionnaires actually had a higher number of patients per clerk than the other clinic. The impact on recruitment it actually ended up being a little bit small uh, in terms of the number of patients that uh, we found via this method. And I think that's probably because of the specific study. This was a study of anxiety, and it turns out because we have a very large depression center and a large psychiatric group that most of those patients who had pediatric uh, patients who had anxiety were already known to this, uh, um, to the, the researchers um, through either the, um, the clinicians themselves or their colleagues who were also doing research in the area. So some conclusions from this. I would say overall, I think the patients preferred iPads over paper, but don't discount paper yet. It's actually very useful. Um, it's very versatile. And patients sometimes wrote comments in that were very helpful. I would say the quirks uh, overall seem to prefer iPads over paper. Some quirks, of course, preferred nothing at all. They just didn't want to do it. Uh, clerical interest clearly decreased over time, uh, but I do think that maybe incentives could help. So this was not, they were not incentivized to do this at all. We just said, please add this to your workflow. I think if we gave them some small incentives, that might um, help out. Data were certainly more complete with the iPads, and no iPads were stolen uh, during this trial. That was a big concern of the clerks. Would they be held responsible if someone stole the iPad? Nothing was stolen. Everybody returned um, what they were supposed to get back. So overall, I would say that um, these iPads can be used in general pediatrics clinics. And they are very um, cost effective. They're not very expensive. And as long as you plug them in every night, uh, it can work very well. So at least it can be added to recruitment efforts as a way to um, try to get more uh, pieces of paper or iPads or something in front of patients. Uh, I won't go into all the acknowledgments, but we, uh, a lot of this was um, um, through our CTSA that we have. So some of that funding came, came from there. And uh, I'm all set. I'm done. Thank you.